In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to remain stylish without compromising on comfort. We're gonna be talking about comfortable and stylish shoes, how to source them, what brands I love to wear, and what designs of shoes to consider. So if your feet are screaming for comfort, but you still wanna look good, then you've come to the right place. So let's get started. So about a year ago, I found out that I have arthritis in my toes, my right toe particularly contributing to a lot of the pain. And not only were my toes affected, but my hip and my knee on the exact same side were also affected and starting to get some pain as well. I went to see a podiatrist and after discussing through some options, I decided to do a massive shoe declutter of all of the shoes that caused a lot of pain for my feet. And then I did a little bit of research to see what shoes would be best for my feet going forward. And I'm not gonna lie, it was difficult to find shoes that were really nice and stylish that were gonna be appropriate for my sore feet. But now that a whole year has passed, I have overhauled my entire shoe collection and have created a really versatile collection of good quality shoes that support my sore feet and still look really good. At least I think so. <laughs> so going forward with the tips today, I just wanted to make clear that I'm gonna be talking on my own experience today with my sore feet. And I wanna kind of highlight that everyone's foot problems can be so different. So what might be comfortable for one person might not work for another person. So always keep in mind yourself and please do see a podiatrist if you are worried about any pain in your feet so that you can get qualified advice from a professional. I am not a professional podiatrist, there's my disclaimer. <laughs> Um, I can only talk on my own personal experience. In case you missed last week's video, I spoke about how to choose the right shoes for your outfit. I spoke about matching colors, different moods that shoes create, the correct leg length of trousers with shoes and so much more. So just like last week's video, I'm going to answer some questions that you guys asked as well throughout this video. But I'm also gonna share my favorite go-to brands that I have been wearing for a long time now so I can really speak on their comfort and their durability and things like that. So I feel very comfortable recommending the brands that I'm recommending today. And I think that's all I want to say. So you all right, Fanta? Do you want to get comfortable? Dick, 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 dick. You're going to clean your bum? So let's start by talking about two really common foot pains that I've heard a lot of people talk about and what kind of designs of shoes to look out for to help with these problems. So firstly, arthritis and bunions in the big toes are really common. And this is likely because we are squishing our feet into shoes that are too small or shoes that have really narrow toe boxes over the course of years and years and years. And so our feet aren't meant to naturally sit in this position where the toes are being squished inwards, which obviously will cause a lot of issues. And then another really common reason for foot pain and foot stress is from high arches. Pain in the heel of the foot is also common and this can also be linked to those high arches. Orthotics can really help a lot, otherwise really supportive shoes can help too. So that's what I wanna talk about now. I personally decided that I would spend some time fixing my shoe collection, replacing old shoes that really hurt my feet with new shoes that were more supportive and didn't cause any pain. So for me, I knew that there were three specific things that I really had to avoid in these new shoes. And those three things were one, avoiding high heels, obviously. The pressure on my toe when wearing high heels is just way too painful. And then the other thing is avoiding sandals that literally feel like a flat piece of slippery cardboard is under your foot. You know what I mean when you can literally look at a sandal and it looks like they've attached some straps to a piece of cardboard. And there's nothing worse when you are walking around in like a cheap sandal and you feel like it's going to just kind of fall off your foot and you kind of have to like grip into keeping it on your foot and then also concentrate on not slipping over. It's just, it's not okay. So that's something I really wanted to avoid, that cardboard-like sandal. With that being said, I do have one very flat sandal in my wardrobe. It was a secondhand pair, but it literally is one of those pairs that I would never wear out knowing that I needed to walk a far way. It's like if I'm going to the pub in summer and I need a nice shoe for a nice dress, these come in handy. Okay, so the third thing that I knew that I needed to avoid was very pointed shoes or shoes that felt tight or narrow around my toes. Now, I would have to agree that like a narrow toed shoe or boot is actually really elegant and is often the more elegant choice. But when it comes down to it, something that is too tight around my toes or too narrow or pointy around my toes just really has to be avoided for that toe pain. In a minute, I will also talk about how I actually stretched out a leather boot that was really too tight around my toes 
I didn't want to get rid of these boots, but I managed to stretch it out and now they're really comfortable. So hang tight. I will share that tip in a moment. Anyway, back to creating my comfortable shoe collection. I started with obviously research, did a lot of Googling, and you guys gave recommendations of comfortable shoes in my shoe decluttering video. I ended up having two brands that really stood out to me and that were recommended by a few of you guys as well. And those two brands were Baird Footwear and Frankie Fall. So I was on a mission to try on as many of their shoes as possible. So both of these brands have shoes that have been designed with the help of podiatrists and all of the shoes have inbuilt arch support. So when I first tried on their shoes, as you can imagine, I wasn't really surprised to feel as though my feet were sitting on clouds. These shoes are really, really cushiony under your feet and you can really feel that arch support. It's not weird, it doesn't feel weird under your foot, but you can, you can feel it and it just feels like, Ooh, I feel supported as I'm walking. And as a side note, when I think about the bigger picture and really think about what our feet do for us on a daily basis, they hold us up, they hold all our weight, they take us from A to B. We need to be so grateful for our feet and we need to treat them really well. And I think when I first put on these cushioned arch support shoes, I was really kind of taken back and realized how much my feet deserved to be feeling that way. Anyway, so now I have a big range of shoes from both of these brands and I've been wearing them for a long time as well. So I wanna talk on a few of my favorites now. So my Mary Janes from Baird, these ones, I have them in black and silver, hands down my most comfortable shoe. I could probably walk a 10K in these shoes. They are so comfortable under my foot. They have the most beautiful inbuilt arch support that just feels like my foot is being hugged when I'm walking. And they were so good that I got them in the second color. And even Chrissy from last week's video left a comment on the video saying, oh, those bed surf bird, Mary Janes, I have them in black and they are sublimely comfortable. Okay, so Chrissy and I both approve and both highly recommend these shoes. You can also get them with a more pointed toe. However, as I mentioned, I'm trying to avoid the toe being too pointed. So this slightly squared off toe seems to give my toe a little bit more room, which is really nice. And just to mention, I actually got these in a size down. I sit somewhere between a 39 and a 40, sometimes a 39 and a half, but usually a 40. And I got them in a 39. So just bear that in mind. I also really love my brown slides from Frankie Fall. These are so easy to just slip on. So I've been wearing them so much. They're super comfortable. I can walk long distances in these, which is great for a slip on sandal. And the brown tan color just seems to go with everything in my wardrobe as well. So these dark oak boots from Baird were the very first shoe that I bought from them. And what I loved about buying these shoes in store was how good their customer service was. And I've noticed through lots of reviews online that a lot of people repeat how good the customer service is. So if something is wrong with your shoe, if they don't fit the way that you like, then you just email them and they will sort it out for you. They don't want anyone left with shoes that aren't a good fit. They know that every foot is different and they try to accommodate everyone to their best ability. So how they did this for me was when I got the boots, I was also given a fit kit. So I got two different sets of insoles, well, a thin insole, and then I also got a thicker insole as well. And then I also got these things which say, place me in the front of the shoe under the footbed if the shoes are too roomy. They also threw in a few gel spots, which they said to put on my sore toe if when I'm wearing in my boots, it's rubbing and becomes painful. So they said to use the thin insole when I'm wearing in the boots so that I can allow like one or two wears for them to stretch out and for the leather to become soft, which is a common thing for leather boots. And then to then move to the thicker insole if I need it. And if say for instance, your boots stretch out more than you want, then you can have that thicker insole to help as well. And I ended up not needing to use the gel spots at all. The boots were fine after one wear. I wear the thin insoles in them at the moment. And even better, I use these thicker insoles for another pair of shoes. So my really old Adidas trainers, which Honestly, it caused me so much pain. I was so upset to get rid of these. These were a gift from Alex, I think for my the first birthday that we were together. Like these are like eight years old, I think. Anyway, I put these thick insoles in them. I went for a big walk and there was no pain and I was so happy. So yeah, 
The insoles are really, really helpful. These don't come with every shoe. They only come with the ones that say that they come with a fit kit. So keep an eye on that. All of the shoes that they recommend good for wide feet come with a fit kit to help you kind of get the right fit for your foot. I'll make sure I leave a link to the wide foot options in the description below as well. And that might be something that you wanna have a look at if you have wide feet. I don't have any experience with wide feet, so I can't really talk on it, but I do know that this brand is amazing and has very good customer service. So it's an option for you guys with wide feet. And if it doesn't work out, just contact them with customer service and I'm sure they will give you a full refund. Like. I know this brand just wants people to be happy. Oh, one thing to mention is Frankie Four also gave me some insoles as well, but I didn't, I didn't love these insoles. They're kind of just like a piece of synthetic fabric, whereas the bed ones are made from plant-based materials and they're really substantial. So that was the only difference in quality between the two brands that I noticed for myself. So let's talk about the price of the shoes, but before we do talk about the price of these shoes, I just wanna mention that this video is not sponsored because I am talking in great detail about these brands and it's just because they're the ones that I've tried and I have a lot of experience with and that I can vouch for. So yeah, it's not sponsored, but I mean, if any of these brands wanna sponsor me. So price of the shoes. It is not a surprise that obviously a shoe that comes with such detail going into the design of the sole and the footbed is going to come at a higher price and they are kind of on the more expensive side. However, it really does depend on your budget and what you deem to be expensive. Let's just talk about the current price of these shoes and compare them to other shoes that don't have this type of support underneath. So let's use my Mary Janes as the price example. At the time of filming this video, they retail at 269 Australian dollars, which is approximately 178 US dollars. So then I looked up a few fast fashion brands H&M and Zara, where you can also buy Mary Janes for around 30 to 50 Australian dollars and a few more premium fast fashion brands like And Other Stories and Cos, where you can buy them for 200 Australian dollars plus. I took a really close look at the photos of the shoes online of the more expensive ones from And Other Stories and Cos. And just because they were more expensive, they were still designed with really flat unsupportive soles, just like the cheaper brands like H&M and Zara. So if you're willing to pay $200 plus, then I would honestly look no further than Baird and Frankie Four for stylish and comfortable shoes. What I would suggest is just starting by buying one pair, then deciding if they're right for you and you can potentially explore getting some more. Buying them in person is obviously going to be a better option than online. But like I said, with Baird, they have such good customer service. And if there's any problems, they should be able to help you. I've had two pairs from Baird that I actually really didn't like the feeling of. And I noticed in the reviews that heaps of other people loved them. So it just goes to show how different all of our feet are. And if you do have painful feet, then you really do have to experiment and try different brands and see what works for you. I know that sounds really annoying to hear. And if the price of these shoes is still out of your budget, but you're intrigued to see what they're like, then maybe think about how you can start putting away a little bit of money each month for the next six or 12 months so that you can then save up for a pair. Two places I don't mind spending money on is my shoes and coats and jackets. They're kind of two areas that when you get really good quality stuff, it makes a really big difference in how things look. And obviously now that I've experienced less pain and so much comfort with these particular shoes, I don't think I will ever buy from other brands if I need to replace any of these in the near future. So another really random thing that I purchased in the hope of helping my sore feet is this shoe stretcher thingy majiggy. <laughs> I don't even know what this is called. So you put it in your shoe or your boot and then you twist this thing and it like opens up. How do I get it to work? There we go. You twist this and it opens up inside your leather shoe and starts stretching it out for you so that your foot doesn't have to stretch it out in pain. So I got this because I purchased these really beautiful secondhand Todd's boots and they were cheap. Todd's is like thousands of dollars and I got them for $120. They're amazing quality and they're beautiful. They fit so well, they're perfect, except my left foot is really comfortable, but my right foot, it was a little iffy, but I could not, I could not pass up these shoes. So I was like, I'm gonna get a stretcher thingy majiggy and I'm gonna 
I'm gonna stretch out my shoes. <laughs> so I stretched out the right foot and now they're super comfortable and I can wear them. So that is super random, but I guess I have to include it in this video because it is something that really helped me. Okay, so let's answer a question from you guys. Your question, my biggest struggle is wanting to look feminine and put together in skirts and dresses, but I want to be comfortable. And if I throw on sneakers, it can ruin an entire elegant look. And I hate to say this because I know you love ballet flats, but I don't find them comfortable at all. And sometimes I feel like they make my legs look stumpier with a dress, for example. I really hope you are able to talk about this one because now that I've written it all out, I'm dying to get your take. <laughs> this made me laugh because I feel like you were typing as you were thinking it at this exact same time, which is funny because I do that too. So <laughs> I can relate to this because I feel your pain on some level. Like I said in last week's video, I recently realized that I was sick of reaching for my white sneakers for every outfit. Don't get me wrong, I still love the look of white sneakers with outfits and I will still wear them, but I just didn't wanna be reaching them for them for every time I was putting an outfit together. And I was at that place where they were the only shoes I could wear because they were the only comfortable shoes that I had. Also, sometimes you don't want that full casual look. You do want to be a little bit more elevated. And so white sneakers aren't for every single outfit. It really depends what kind of look you're going for. And I just wanted to be able to not have my look be completely casual by trainers. Cause like you said, it can really ruin an elegant look or maybe ruin isn't the right word, but white trainers can certainly change the look and make an elegant look be perceived as more casual. And if that's not the vibe that you were going for, then yes, you are gonna be disappointed with your sneakers. So basically, long story short, I was on the hunt for a shoe that matched my personal style and that was comfortable and that was slightly more elegant than a sneaker and that I could reach for as an alternative. And for me, that was my Mary Jane Valley Flats. They have been pivotal in allowing me to dress up outfits, but still remain comfortable. Now you've said that you don't find Valley Flats comfortable, but have you tried the ones that I've been talking about today? Because they are very comfortable. However, I do agree with you that sometimes the ballet flat isn't the best option for a dress, especially if it's a mid-length or a long dress. And I spoke about that in last week's shoe video. I do think that can, it can sometimes make you feel a bit more stumpier when you wear them with those longer dresses. So with that all being said, my suggestion for you would be to find a shoe that obviously suits your personal style that has a really supportive sole, like we've spoken about already. And my initial instinct would be to recommend some sort of buckled sandal. Here are some pictures on the screen now of examples that I like from Baird Footwear and Frankie Four. And I honestly think that a beautiful sandal with an open toe and good support will help you to stop reaching for your trainers and keeping your dresses looking elegant. One of the biggest form of bunions can be squeezing your toes into narrow footbeds. I touched on this earlier that our toes aren't meant to be pushed together like this and over time it can cause the toes to change shape and cause arthritis or bunions. So the solution to this for many people is barefoot shoes. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Yes, we're gonna talk about barefoot shoes. <laughs> barefoot shoes are designed to have a feeling as though you're wearing bare feet, but one of their key features is a wide toe box so that your toes aren't getting all squished. Now, unfortunately, these shoes are really hard to design with a large toe box and remain looking stylish. Throughout most of fashion history, we have associated a really narrow, slim shoe with an elegant look. So these wide toe boxes are more like clown feet or duck feet. So they're not perceived as stylish as a narrow shoe. In recent years, however, it has been a bit more trendy to do the whole square toed look that's come back around from like the 90s and stuff, which does make things helpful in a sense. And that is the reason that I chose the more squared off toe as opposed to the pointy toe. But in terms of barefoot shoes, I've done a lot of research and I've tried two brands myself. And I'm just gonna be 100% honest with you about my thoughts about the styles that I've tried and what I like and what I dislike. So I have three pairs of barefoot shoes. All three of them are incredibly comfortable, no doubt about it. So comfortable and cause no pain in my big toes. My white sneakers from Origo were worn on my three week trip to Italy every single day. And we stayed on the side of a mountain in the Dolomites. So as you can imagine, there was a lot of walking 
up and down mountains in steep inclines and there was not one day that my toes were aggravated by these shoes. So these shoes are now the shoes that I reach for when I know that I'm going out walking for a long period of time or particularly if I'm going to be doing like a lot of incline walking. In terms of the way that they look, they were definitely an adjustment compared to my other sneakers but honestly like only the first time I wore them. After that they just felt quite normal to me. I think their shape is so beautiful compared to other barefoot shoes. You can hardly tell from the front or side that they are barefoot. The more obvious view is from the top and still even then I don't find them that offensive. I love that the ones that I chose have this little silver detail at the back but other ones that they have either have plain at the back or you can choose from other colors as well. And I find that this small detail is a way of keeping these sneakers looking slightly cooler and a little bit more on trend than other barefoot brands. So the boots I've tried are from Feel Grounds and these ones again are so comfortable. However, I couldn't really wrap my head around loving the design of these shoes in the end. I've worn both pairs out a lot and I never got to the point where I was like, okay, I feel great in these. The toe box is not offensively huge. On the Feel Grounds ones, I think it's actually smaller which is nice, but the shoe itself, like the design of the shoe just feels a little let down for me. The design isn't as of high quality and like modern as I would have hoped. I'm still keeping them and I'm still trying to make them work every now and then. The brand, however, Feel Grounds, I think they have really cool sneakers with a range of different colors and different styles. I absolutely love the gum sole design. I think that's really cool. And I know that their shoes are comfortable so I can at least vouch for the comfort. As you can see here, Origo have come out with lace up boots and you can notice the detail of the stitching and the overall design that they just feel a little more thought out and attractive. B Primal have these loafers, which I haven't tried but I don't mind the look of these. However, their boots, as you can see, are quite hikerish and not so much for everyday fashion wear. And then I'd say another barefoot brand that absolutely smashes it out of the park for cool designed sneakers is Groundies. They seem to have designed a range of different colors that are quite attractive and look like relatively normal sneakers that you would find in any shop nowadays. But I have never tried these ones on myself. For any men watching, Carrots shoes is by far the best choice for men's barefoot dress shoes. I only wish they did more women's. They do have brogues for women, which are designed really beautifully if you wear brogues. So you guys asked me how to style barefoot shoes. And honestly, I think it's more about the research and actually finding a pair that you like the look of and accepting that they will never look exactly the same as shoes with a smaller toe box, but using them wisely when you know that you need them for certain pain that you have. With that all being said, barefoot shoes might not be for everyone's foot because they don't have that inbuilt arch support and they are quite flat to the ground to mimic that barefoot feeling. Some podiatrists are really against barefoot shoes and others really rave about them. So what I think we can learn from this is that every foot is different and obviously medical professionals, they all have different opinions as well. And it's important to understand our own health and test out things for ourselves and make decisions that are right for us. That's why I have now a mix of shoe designs in my wardrobe that I am really happy with. And whether I'll be walking all day or only walking between my house and the car, I know which ones can be worn on which occasions. Before buying any new colors or any new styles of shoes for your collection, make sure you go back and watch last week's video where I talk about how to choose the right shoes for your outfit. It's a long video, but the feedback has been so good. So I definitely recommend watching that one. And if you've already watched that, then you can go try my dressing rules video, which is also up on the screen now too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.